Human skin is an incredible organ. It plays a vital role in protecting us, regulating our body temperature by controlling blood flow and sweating and helping us sensing our surroundings. Welcome to Andromedia. In this video, we will delve into the fascinating interplay between genetics, environment and evolution in shaping the diverse range of skin tones observed in human populations. More importantly, we will understand the role of Neanderthal introgression on human skin color. Skin color in humans is determined by a combination of genetic, environmental and evolutionary factors. Geography plays a significant role with people in different regions exhibiting varying skin tones in response to sunlight exposure. The most prominent determinant of skin color is geographic location. Darker skin tends to occur in more tropical regions closer to the equator while lighter skin is found in temperate regions, particularly at higher latitudes. Maps on skin color show that darkly pigmented people were found near the equator and lighter ones are found closer to the poles. A larger percentage of people with darker skin is found in southern hemisphere as compared to the northern hemisphere. This is mainly because of exposure to the intensity of ultraviolet radiations, which plays a significant role in shaping skin pigmentation. People living near equator have higher UVR exposure, therefore tend to have darker skin to protect against UVR-induced damage. The amount and type of melanin in the skin determines its color. Darker skin contains more melanin which effectively absorbs and scatters UVR to protect against damage. Lighter skin color allows for more efficient synthesis of vitamin D in response to UV radiation. In regions with less sunlight, lighter skin can help prevent vitamin D deficiency. Recent hypotheses suggest that melanin pigmentation may have evolved to protect folate from UVR-induced photolysis. Folate is essential for DNA synthesis and has a critical role in reproductive success. There are also evidence of sexual dimorphism in human skin pigmentation, with females generally having lighter skin than males. The early members of the genus Homo from the late Pliocene and early Pleistocene of Africa exhibited larger bodies, relatively larger brains, and relatively larger lower limbs than did their australopathicine predecessors. The higher activity levels and larger day ranges would have required that their skin be functionally naked and endowed with high density of acrine sweat glands in order to facilitate heat loss. This situation created a new physiological challenge for human skin. Protection of a naked body against UVR. Dense hairy coats protect the skin of mammals from UVR-induced damage to the skin. In mammals with sparse coats of hair, however, 3-5% to of the incident UVR is transmitted to the skin. Non-human mammals that are active in hot, sunny environments exhibit sparse coats because they facilitate passive heat loss. They also display highly melanized skin on their exposed surfaces to effectively block the UVR transmitted to the skin. This evidence clearly indicates that hair loss in human lineage was coupled with increased melanization of the skin as activity levels in hot environments increased. The early members of the genus Homo, the ancestral stock from which all later humans evolved and were thus darkly pigmented. This interpretation has recently been supported by genetic evidence demonstrating that strong levels of natural selection acted about 1.2 million years ago to produce darkly pigmented skin in early members of the genus Homo. Heavily pigmented skin does not increase the body's heat load under conditions of intense solar radiations. This is because for half of the solar radiations reaching the Earth's surface in the infrared, there is essentially no difference in absorption between dark and light skin. Human skin color has traditionally been viewed as a polygenetic trait, influenced by multiple genes interacting with the environment. Investigating how genes and the environment contribute to skin color variations has been challenging. 
Early genetic studies indicated that interbreeding between light and dark-skinned individuals resulted in offspring with intermediate skin tones. The color of our skin is mainly determined by the amount of melanin, specifically eumelanin pigment and pheomelanin, red pigment. The balance between these two types of melanin is influenced by a hormone called melanocyte stimulating hormone which binds to MC1R receptor encoded by the MC1R gene. Some loss of function variants in MC1R gene could alter the process of melanogenesis by reducing the production of eumelanin which results in pale skin and red hair. Interestingly, this gene exhibits high levels of variation in light-skinned individuals outside of Africa but lower diversity in dark-skinned individuals within Africa, indicating different selective pressures on the gene in different regions. So far, five loss-of-function variants in MC1A are found are related to fair skin and red or blonde hair. These are associated with specific skin types and hair colors. Of these, the VAL92 MAT variant of MC1A is found as one of the most frequent MC1A mutations associated with red hair and type 1 and type 2 skin. VAL92 MAT is linked to red hair and pear skin. This variant changes the structure of the MC1R receptor and reduces its ability to respond to MSH. Some studies suggest that the evolution of sun-resistant MC1R alleles began when early humans became hairless in tropical Africa and these alleles became advantageous as humans moved to less sunny environments in Eurasia. One of the recent debates in evolution of human skin color has been the influence of Neanderthal introgression. Neanderthal introgression refers to the interbreeding between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals. When early modern humans migrated out of Africa and encountered Neanderthals in Eurasia, there was interbreeding between the two groups. As a result, many people of non-African ancestry today have a small percentage of Neanderthal DNA in their genomes, typically ranging from 1 to 2%. Neanderthals and early modern humans likely had different pigmentation traits due to their adaptation to different environments. Neanderthals lived in regions with lower sunlight exposure, so they may have had adaptations for fair skin to maximize vitamin D production. When early modern humans interbred with Neanderthals, they may have acquired some of these Neanderthal pigmentation related genes including variants of MC1R. The researchers have identified whether this VAL92 MAT variant had any connection to Neanderthals. Previous studies have shown that some Neanderthal genes are present in modern humans, but it was unclear if MC1A was influenced by Neanderthal genetics. To investigate this, the scientists looked at the DNA around the MC1A gene in modern human populations. They identified specific markers in this DNA that are characteristic of Neanderthals. These markers suggest that some people today carry genetic material inherited from Neanderthals in the region around MC1A. In simpler terms, scientists wanted to investigate if modern humans have some genetic traits inherited from Neanderthals. They focused on MC1A and its surrounding region on chromosome 16. To do this, they looked at genetic information from various populations and compared it to Neanderthal DNA. They identified 59 genetic markers that were present in some human populations and were believed to have originated from Neanderthals. This suggested that some modern humans might have inherited these genetic traits from Neanderthal ancestors. Additionally, they noticed that in some cases, individuals had a mix of genetic material from both Neanderthals and modern humans, indicating that there may have been interbreeding between the two groups. To confirm their findings, they conducted a phylogenetic analysis, a kind of family tree of genes. This analysis supported the idea that some human genetic material is more closely related to Neanderthals than to other ancient human groups like Denisovians. Recently, scientists have studied the DNA of modern Europeans to see how much of our genetic makeup comes from Neanderthals. They looked at 136 different traits like skin color, hair type, behavior, and health. 
they found that Neanderthal genes seem to have a higher influence on things related to skin and hair. However, when they compared Neanderthal genes to our own modern human genes, they found they have a similar impact on these traits. This suggests that Neanderthals were probably similar to us in terms of skin and hair. But there are few behaviors where Neanderthal genes seem to play a bigger role than our own. These behaviors include things like activity patterns, feelings of loneliness, lack of interest, and smoking habits. Of these behaviors, the preference for being active in the evening also seems to be related to where people live, which suggests it might be influenced by how much sunlight they get. Skin pigmentation is highly influenced by local environmental factors. As modern humans migrated to different regions of the world, they encountered varying levels of UV variations. Natural selection likely played a significant role in determining the optimal level of melanin in skin to protect against harmful UV radiations, while allowing for the synthesis of vitamin D. Neanderthal genes related to pigmentation might have contributed to local adaptations in response to specific environmental conditions. In summary, Neanderthal introgression may have played a role in shaping the diversity of skin pigmentation observed in human populations worldwide outside of Africa. However, it is just one of the many factors contributing to this variation, and the precise impact of Neanderthal genes on human skin 